Good morning and welcome to day two of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 3. Um, and it's a it's quite it's, it's a bit of a chilly chillier morning today I, I'll have to say it's a it's a bit dull and it's recently just been raining as well um, but it's wonderful I mean I, I don't know if you can just see the the, the sun rising just over there it's a uh, very lovely, lovely way to start the day with a nice cup of tea on the rivers and the rivers are very calm, there's not a breath of wind this morning, lovely. Um, it's probably about half past six this morning um, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good night last night actually. Um, after the, <laughs> the, the minor panic about uh, finding a mooring, um, uh, yeah, we uh, we got into Horning, went to the ferry inn, had a couple of beers, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was an early night. It, it was an early night because obviously it had been a, a long day, you know. But it, it was good. It was good. Thoroughly enjoyed it, you know. Um, so uh, up nice and sharp this morning, and I've no idea what we're gonna do. Absolutely not got a Scooby. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just getting up, uh, making my first cup of coffee or tea and uh, get myself uh, ready for the day but I just thought I'd bring you out and let you have a wee look and see what's what because it really is uh, I mean this is the thing about the Norfolk Broads uh, and it's really quite strange is, is that even when it's dull and cloudy and wet and raining you know there's still some sort of majesty and beauty about the Broads you know and the rivers are just always so calm and peaceful and tranquil, you know, and just sitting here having my cup of tea, you know, listening to the the, the, the dawn chorus, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. It really is lovely. It's, it's absolutely great. This is why I love it. It's fantastic. You know, I love getting up at this time of the morning, you know. Um, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it was a good night last night. That's what I was going to say. Um, the brain's not engaged yet, you know. I've, 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 I just not even had my cup of tea. <laughs> um, it was a good night, but it did, it did definitely get a bit chilly last night. Very, very much a bit, a, a bit chilly. Um, but it was good, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite liking the, the broad sun charm. Uh, I, I showed you that yesterday. Should I take you through it just now? Well, the place is a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, no, I, I'll wait till better light, and then I'll take you around the boat. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd say hi. Um, welcome you to day two, and uh, yeah, I've, I've, like I say, I've, I said this yesterday, is that it's, it's quite a strange feeling. Um, I've, I've always had a plan before about where to go and what to do, you know, um, where you know things I want to see, you know, and places I want to visit, you know. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea what I am doing today. <laughs> I'm just getting up, having a cup of tea, you know, listen to a little relaxing music, you know, um, and it's, yeah, we will get sorted and we, then we will figure out what we're doing, you know. So, uh, that's the plan, which is nothing. <laughs> and, uh, Let's get it sorted. Let's get the day. Let's get energised and organised and get back out in the rivers. So, until I know what I'm doing, I'll let you know as soon as I know. And uh, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.
today we are on our way. Um, the time is currently half past seven and I had my cup of tea and I decided what am I going to do today and well I decided well you know it's early you know and I really do like cruising the rivers very early in the morning because they're very calm they're very peaceful there's not a lot of people about um, and yeah it's just such a, a wonderful well I personally feel it's a time to, it's, it's a wonderful it's a great time to actually be out on the rivers cruising so I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a a short wee cruise up to Roxham um, have a wee look about you know I'll probably not moor there I'll probably just go up to Roxham um, and uh, turn around uh, and then I'll probably find a wee place to moor up um, and then I'll go and get my shower and you know hopefully all, all the, the boat and uh, the water and everything like that should be nice and hot um, so I'll get myself organized but uh, yeah I thought that would be a great wee, wee plan uh, just a short wee cruise uh, just to warm everything up um, have my um, second cup of tea <laughs> um, and uh, yeah uh, take it from there. Um, after that though, I don't really know. I'll have a wee look, uh, look about the map. Um, I'm thinking though, considering I never got to um, Ramworth yesterday, um, I'm thinking I might go and uh, have another wee try at Ramworth later. Possibly, possibly, but I've no idea. Let's just see where the day goes. But we're back on the on the go again. Um, the rain was off, but as I speak to you, it's coming back on, and obviously I've got the uh, the sunroof back because it's, it's why not? <laughs> you know, it's it's really nice. Um, it's a bit chilly, but it's nice. It is nice. Um, but if the rain's coming back on, I'm gonna have to slide that back over. Um, so yeah. We are cruising down the river, we're just leaving Horning um, and we're going to go up to Roxham, uh, turn around, uh, I don't know if we'll get word in Roxham, probably not, um, so we'll probably have to come back out and back down the river um, and find a mooring. And uh, yeah, uh, so until uh, something else happens, that's where we've been, that's where we are, and that's where we're going. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, until I've got something else to say, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you later, okay? Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.
here just a wee update for you. Um, uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> yeah, um, time has just passed 10 o'clock and uh, it's been uh, quite a good day actually so far. Um, I went up to Roxham. Uh, rain did come down for a while on a journey up there, but I just went up there, uh, turned at the bridge, and then I came back down. And obviously, by the time I was leaving Roxham, um, the rain eased off again, uh, so I was able to get a little footage just leaving Roxham. Came down. Um, I'm currently moored out just outside. Oh, I think it's uh, I think it's Roxham Broad on the, on the main river, uh, on the free moorings here, and it's really really nice. Uh, it's still a bit on the sort of cloudy side, you know, but the sun is trying to come out, but it's warmed up a, a little bit. Um, very, very calm, and so far, I'm having no problems with my mooring. So far. <laughs> but then again, you know, there's no wind, you know, and it's plenty of space, so yeah, I, I'm getting the hang of manoeuvring this, um, this 35 footer. Um, so yeah, I just uh, moored up here, I went, had a shower, tidied up, and... Um, freshened up, um, had a coffee and a, a, a little breakfast, and yeah, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. So, uh, what is the plan today? Well, <sighs> uh, well, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back down the river, um, and I might, um, I might actually have a wee look at St. Bennett's Abbey because I've never actually been to St. Bennett's Abbey yet. Um, I've just always passed by it. Um, it's early enough. I've got plenty of time, you know. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing. So um, yeah, and uh, uh, it's going to be great. Going to be great. Um, let's have a wee look at the boat. I'll tell you what. Yeah, let's have a wee look at the boat. Okay, right. There we go, that is um, Broad Sun Charm 1. Uh, she's a forward steer cruiser, 35 foot long with only a 7 uh, foot air draft. So pl easy, very easy getting under the bridges, don't need to worry about it. You know, This is the first time I've ever had a forward steer cruiser. Um, I was, I've was i never really been a, a great lover of, of these types of boats, but for a first time solo helming, I thought it would be um, an ideal beginner's boat, you know, because uh, you've obviously got the, uh, the door at the front and the door at the back, so it's easy to get in and off. You've also got nice wide freeboards here as well. Um, easy access to walk up and down and the canopy sort of slides back uh, half it on one side and half it on the other side so yeah it's uh it's, it's quite a nice wee boat actually you know I'm, I, it's appealing to me i can see the appeal of these cruisers and why they're so popular um what i'll do though if you'll excuse the mess okay because i've not tidied up inside it okay so it is a bit lived in okay i'm still getting to grips with it but here's what we'll do is we'll we'll go in and i'll take you through uh broad sun charm take you through broad sun charm so here's the the front of it and uh yeah this is the uh the, the saloon area here um it's uh Quite nice and spacious, you know. Quite comfortable to be sitting in it. Uh, I, I really like these wee sort of uh, clocks up here. You've got a clock here and you've got a barometer here. You know, I actually, I actually do like that. You know, um, the the helming position. Uh, oh, that's your your TV, your DVD. You know, another reason why I chose this one is because it has a 240 volt. Um, supply so I can plug in all my, my chargers and all that uh, uh, CD player with the auxiliary so I can listen to my iPod uh, the inverter got a nice wee water gauge here as well which I, I really actually like I do like this um, um, because um, you know it's, it's I don't need to guess how much water is in my tank you know I just push the gauge and there you go, after one shower and some cleaning up, washing, I've used a third of a tank. So I'll top the, the water up later, but I do like that gauge. I, I wish more boats actually came with gauges. Um, that's the first boat I've had that I've actually had a gauge. Um, 
here's the helming position, obviously a bow thruster. Once again, um, something I thought would be very handy to have uh, for your first solo. I've, never, I've, I've actually always had a bow thruster on my boat. And oh, wait a minute, that's the kettle boiling. Hold on a second, I forgot I was uh, boiling the kettle there. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I like my bow thruster. Obviously, you've got your horn, your rev gauge, your warning lights, um, your, your water pump, um, your wiper, your bilge, um, and obviously your various wee bits and pieces of your gauge. No speedometer though. That's the only thing. Um, I know uh, a lot of the boats are just, um, especially on the older boats, they just rely you speed on your rev counter. I don't because you know tides. You know it can affect your your speed. So I actually use an app on my phone, which is actually shut off at the moment. Um, but if we uh, just do that, I'll just uh, it's a, it's a speedometer app there that I bring up. Um, and it's not showing anything at the moment because I'm stationary, but it'll actually give it in uh, decimal points as well when I'm actually moving. So it's a good wee app. I like that, and obviously, give, when you're stationary, you get a wee bit of wind and weather information as well. Um, it's not not uh, the view out the the boat is not terrific. Another reason why I was never really keen on these sort of forward steer cruisers, you know, you, I mean, you, the windows are quite wide, but, but this stanchion here is obviously, that gets in the way a bit, you know, um, of your your view. And when you, uh, when you sit it, sat at the helm position, you know, you turn around, you can see, see out the side, okay, over your shoulder, forget it. Out this one, nice big wide windows, but look back and yeah, you know, it's you know you could you could slide the um yeah the roof back like that and then stick your head out and then look down, but um yeah, uh, one of these things with um uh, the uh, the forward steer cruisers, the forward steer cruisers is that the the visibility behind you is not very good at all so this is making well I discovered this when I tried my stern on mooring it's not easy doing a stern on mooring you know uh, compared to the um, the center cockpits or the flybridge cruisers that I have had in the past but she is very easy to handle that's the main thing see it's not too bad um, Obviously, this is the, the kitchen area. It's, it's, it's a wee bit messy because I've just had breakfast, you know. But uh, I will say that this about uh, this boat, there's tons of storage space. You know, you've got cupboards there, you've got wee cubby holes, cubby holes. You know, you've got a wee cubby hole there, more cupboards, cupboards, fridge, cupboards, cupboards, cupboards. Radiator, very nice, you know. Um, four burner hob, lovely. Um, uh, and uh, you've got the fridge, and you've got your, oh, that's all your wee bits and pieces, you've got a microwave, more cupboards. That door there leads into the shower and the toilet. Um, I've just got the table there just now to obviously let the heat out of the radiator. But if we walk into the bedroom here, um, once again you'll excuse all of the, the mess. Um, you got full length wardrobe, more cupboard space. You know, we saw a single bed there and you got the double bed there. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it'd be great for like um a family, you know, two adults and uh, a kid, you know. Um rear doors, another radiator, more cup cupboard space, so tons of ton tons of storage space. Um I'm gonna take you in here. It's uh, it's a wee bit of a mess, cause like I say, but uh, yeah, um, you got a nice wee sort of heated towel rail there, um, sink, toilet, shower, and obviously, in order to use the the shower, you'll see there's no shower head. Well, that's because that extends on a extendable hose, goes up there, and then you just 
control it with that and it is a lovely hot shower I can vouch for that personally that's obviously the door back out into the hall don't need that because I just use the door in the bedroom and that's a mirror there and obviously we go back out here and uh, yeah that's out the back of the boat so yeah, and it's really, really calm and peaceful. But that is Broad Sun Charm 1. And uh, like I say, very, very, as you can see my foot there, very wide, easy access, free boards all up the side of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, like I said, um, I'm still not um, hooked on forward steer cruisers, I will admit. Um, even after spending one night on it. Uh, there are limitations to it, but I do see the advantage of it. Oh, something else. I quite like this wee sort of, this escape ladder. That I've seen a lot of these in the Richardson's boats. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's if, you know, if somebody should fall down. I'm, I wouldn't imagine anybody would want to go swimming on the Norfolk Broads, but should you fall in, you know, a nice wee ladder to easily get yourself back out so I do actually like that feature that's a nice wee safety feature I think but uh, yeah um, I'm still not 100% sold on uh, forward steer cruisers but I do see the advantage I and uh, I do like them um, but they have limitations and, and they have sort of certain issues uh, primarily down to their layout. Oh, something else I should actually point out about Broad Sun Charm is that the engine is at the back outside, which is quite a, a, a good wee thing because that means that you're not disturbed by the engine when you're cruising up front. If you remember, um, one of the things I said about Fair Sovereign last year was that because the engine was uh, under a saloon floor, it did sometimes get a wee bit on the noisy side, especially if you were at high revs. Um, I do have a slight um, minor issue with uh, the boat at the moment. Um, it's very, very minor. Easy steps in and off as well, I should point out. Uh, oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I do have a, a minor issue with the boat at the moment. I think it's, it's probably because um, it's not been used all year. Or at least I'm the first person to use it this year. And it's that the throttle between um, about 1200 and uh, 1700 revs it won't stay in that position it keeps sliding back down to about 1200 revs you know so if, if you need to apply just a little bit more revs maybe up to um, uh, 1400 or 1500 revs you'll slide the throttle over and um, if you leave it there it will slide back down slowly but surely back down to 1200 revs um, I think it's purely because um, it, it's, it's just not quite stiff enough, you know, the, the vibrations keep knocking the, the throttle lever back. Um, it might just be because I'm the first user this year, I don't know. It's not really too much of an issue for me at the moment because I just rest my hand on the throttle and that's enough to keep it there. Um, you know, I, I don't need to like push it down, I just rest my hand and that holds the throttle there. It's not a major issue for me at the moment, but it was. It, it is something I will mention to them. Um, when I take the boat back for the next um, hire, you know. Um, but other than that, you know, she's performing faultlessly, you know, I can't really fault her. Um, the visibility issue, that's just standard for these types of cruisers. Um, but yes, I, uh, yeah, I'm liking her, I'm liking her. She's comfortable, you know, the bed was really nice. I really slept well in that bed last night. And yeah, so that is Broad Sun Charm 1. <laughs> And um, that was my little wee tour of the boat, if you like. Um, probably a wee bit more, um, uh, less rushed than the tour of the Fair Sovereign, which was only done at the last minute. But uh, yeah, so that's the boat so far. Anyway, uh, the time is now half past ten, so I should really get myself organised and uh, set off down the river. Um, 
I, I think I'm gonna I, I think I'm gonna head for uh, St Bennett's and have a wee look because like I say I've never been I've only ever passed it and it would be nice to actually visit there once so that will be um, some place where I shall go new <laughs> so yeah so um, yeah that's it so that's where I am uh, that's where I've been I've been up at Locksham and that's where I'm going St Bennett's let's do this get us day kicking off okay right so um that's all for now uh so until later until i've got something to say i'll speak to you soon bye bye for now
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, so I uh, had a nice wee cruise down the river there. Uh, very lovely. The, uh, it's uh, a wee bit of a, a very slight breeze picking up, but uh, putting a nip in the air, but it's nothing too bad actually. And I had the, the, the roof back on the, the boat pretty all, all the way down. Um, I'm actually moored up here at St. Bennett's. Um, I'll just, uh, I don't know if you can see that St. Bennett's over in the background there, possibly. Um, but before I go and have a wee wander, I just wanted a very, very quick wee um, gripe, moan, slightly. Um, if you're going to come to the Broads and you bring your dogs, Fantastic, brilliant, you know, it's, it's, you know, lots of places to run around. But, if you moor up, okay, and you're, you're taking your dog for a walk, and your dog does the poo, um, do me a favour, will you? Pick it up, please, okay? Um, I'm moored up here at St. Bennett's, and there's nothing fresh here, but there has obviously been dogs being allowed to poo and not picked up and it's all dried in and crushed and everything like that and it's really not nice really honestly so yeah um, just a minor wee thing please if you come to the, the broads and you bring your dog it doesn't take two seconds I know it's an icky job I've got two cats myself and there's nothing worse than having to to they put the litter tray and clean it and everything like that. It's a horrible job, but it's part of having an animal and a pet. You know, you've got to clean up and look after after them, you know. So it's not nice for other people to be coming here and doing the, the poo minefield when trying to moor up a boat, okay? So please, um, it's, it's just a minor wee thing, you know, I'm sure everybody else does it, you know, I'm sure there's nobody that, that watches this that would go, oh yeah, well, you know, I'd, I'd just leave it, you know? No, I'm sure everybody does, but it's just, uh, it's, it's not nice. It really isn't nice. So please, if you, if, if you bring a dog, Please pick up. <laughs> when you, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Right. Anyway, that's my minor wee gripe. Okay, I'm not going to go on about it. I'm not going to make a big issue of it. You know, I've, I've said it. It's not nice, and yeah, that's it. Okay, so done and done. Anyway, on with the adventure. <laughs> that was not the adventure. Step it over, old. Dog poo is not the, <laughs> the kind of adventure I'd kind of wanted, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, let's get on with the adventure. And today we are now going to go and visit St. Bennett's. So let's get down there and have a wee look. Never been there, so it'll be interesting to see. So um, yeah, let's go and I shall see you at St. Bennett's. Speak to you later. Bye bye. Okay. Um, yes, that's uh, St. Bennett's. Uh, Having quite a, a look around and wow, very it's quite eerie in here. Um, the uh, I'm quite taken aback by it actually. It's a very strange experience. Um, I don't know if it's the, the sheer stillness of the atmosphere in here, or, or, or the echo, or, or what, but it's, it's really quite... Wow, I'm quite impressed. I mean, I've obviously passed here many, many times on the river, uh, and taken a load of photos from the river, but this is the first time I've actually visited this, and... Well, I'm just, I'm just looking at the arch here. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll spin you around. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm just looking at the arch here and I've just noticed, just up there, the carvings in the water. I don't know what he's supposed to be doing, what, what's in his hand, but there's a, there's a guy there, and then on the other side of the arch, obviously it looks like to be some sort of lion carved in there. And that's just the archway inside. Um, 
it's, it's also interesting to note as well that over the years everybody seemed to have like placed all, all their their, their graffiti marks well, I'm not sure if <laughs> you know I would never do anything like that but it's I mean the 1976 you know there's um, I'm just trying they're all over the place here's one for 1910 keys 1910 so they've, they've been obviously been etching their their mark on here for many many years well 1910 that will be over a hundred years hundred years now there's another one 1955 you know it's like wow um, very yeah very very strange place you know uh, obviously the mill that's been uh, just leaning back <coughs> uh, the mill that's been built in in the ruins of the, of the abbey and yeah it's wow great place to come and think uh, I would imagine very unique place to come and think actually gather your thoughts I don't know if you can hear that I'm just hearing the I mean it's not breezy at all outside but I'm just hearing a, a slight whisper of the wind through the upper hole, well I don't know, I'm assuming that would be the upper doors of the old mill. Very spooky actually. Uh, I mean I, I don't know if there's any sort of history related to uh, hauntings or ghosts or anything like that but a place like this I wouldn't be surprised if there's something. Wow, what an experience. Just... I think I would definitely visit again, actually. And uh, if you've never been, uh, like myself, just always past it, I would definitely recommend that you take uh, five, ten minutes um, to come and visit it and just stand in here. Very, very surreal experience. I'm having a moment of a <laughs> philosophical thought. Wow. Um, okay, right, um, before I get too involved in my phil philosophy, which is very bad actually, <laughs> let me just take you outside. Um, that's actually quite... Even doing that, I mean, it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to explain, but out here, back outside, you're, this is, you know, you're outside, you're back in the world, but you walk through the, that hatchway over there, and something happens when you pass that threshold I don't know you, you just get a, a, a strange sort of feeling wash over you that is, re that, that, that is really spooky actually that really is. I mean m maybe it's just me m maybe I'm just you know reading too much into it you know and all I'm doing is passing from outside into a, a dark echoey chamber but well, there's something definitely going on when you pass that threshold. I, I didn't notice it going in, but just chatting to you as I walked out, I definitely noticed a change. Wow, that is really sort of weird. <laughs> really weird, actually. But uh, totally cool. Very, very cool.
I'd definitely come back here. Definitely. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take a wander over to the uh, lacrosse um, over there. Actually, what does it say over here? Let me just have a wee... Uh, just spin you back. Uh, oh, that's just a live soccer. Uh, I don't know uh, what the cross is. I'll maybe save the cross for another adventure. That's maybe what I'll do. <laughs> don't want to uh, uh, do too much. I'm actually really. Uh, I am. I'm. I'm really sort of taken away um, with the whole atmosphere in there. I'm seeing a, a couple of. Uh, hold on a sec. I know I'm spinning you around left, right, and centre. You'll be getting bloody seasick, won't you? <laughs> right. Hold on. Right, I'm just, uh, that's the archway to the um, main abbey, I believe. Uh, and obviously the, the mill was built inside the ruins. But I'm just also noticing just up there in the left hand corner, there seems to be a, a shield of some description up there. And there's another one on the other side, just there. Obviously, uh, age and erosion, where has uh, made them a wee bit illegible, illegible, illegible. But that one seems to have the, the th three lions on it again. So yeah, very, uh, very unique experience indeed. I really am very taken aback with that. I, I, I just thought it was just some old ruins, you know, and I pass by and I know people come and visit it and people talk about it and... I didn't quite expect to uh, feel that sort of strange sensation inside that, that old mill, like I did. And, uh... It's one thing to pass by it, and another thing to actually get up close and see all the the details and the textures and all the obviously the the graffiti. I mean, it's actually on the outside as well. Um, it is really, really, all really strange. I mean, people carving into it and etching. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> that was, a, that was a, a very unique experience. I'm glad I came, I'm glad I came. <laughs> right, anyway, um, so, uh, that is, uh, that's in St. Bennett's Abbey. Wow, I'm definitely coming back sometime, definitely, you know, just take 10, 15 minutes out, you know, moor up and just come in and have a wee, uh, thinking session inside that mill because it was definitely um yeah very good anyway so uh what now well uh we'll go back to the boat and we'll decide what's for um i've no idea um what i'm gonna do now um it's still only oh it must only be about uh half twelve quarter to one i think it is um so uh still got pretty much all day um I think the best thing to do is go back to the boat, put the kettle on and uh, have a look at the map and see what's what. So uh, until I know, um, I'll speak to you later. Until then, ciao for now. Bye bye.
Okay, right, uh, I'm back. <laughs> right, um, and we're at Ramworth. Would you believe I actually managed to get into Ramworth? Um, yeah, uh, I left St. Bennett's and um, I was uh, just, just trying to decide what I was wanting to do and where I was wanting to go. And I decided, you know something, I really want to go back to the Maltzers for dinner. Um, and I thought, well, it's knocking on one o'clock, you know, should be space in theory, you know, and if there isn't, you know, I could hang around for a bit, you know, because some of the people probably end up going away later or, you know, and yeah, brilliant. So I came down in here and there's a few spaces um, and yeah, so got straight in and uh, I thought, brilliant. So I'm going to go and have a late lunch in the Maltzers or an early dinner, um, <laughs> probably an early dinner. Um, so go and get a bite to eat, have a few beers, you know, um, and you know, I don't actually know if that will be me for the day or if I'll maybe after something I'll uh, go elsewhere. Um, no idea, but uh, yeah, we're in at Ramworth. So I'm going to get my dinner that I didn't get last night after all. Brilliant, very happy about that. Um, so that's it. that could be it. Um, it's still plenty of daylight left. It's uh, really, really nice. Very calm and peaceful here, actually. I do, I do like this, uh, this wee place here. Uh, I can see why it's so busy and uh, so very, very popular. But uh, yeah, so that's us at Ramworth. Um, it might be the end of day two of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure three. Um, it really all depends on how much beer I have with my lunch or a dinner. <laughs> um, if I only have one or two, I may maybe go uh, for another wee wander and moor up elsewhere. Maybe do a wee wild mooring for the night. Um, if I have uh, three or four, um, then that this could be the end of um, the day for me. But uh, yeah, I'll just have to wait and see. Uh, like I said uh, yesterday, I've got no idea what I'm doing. I've got no plans for this adventure. I'm just uh, taking it literally hour by hour. And uh, it's, uh, it's proving to be quite an uh, enjoyable uh, experience. Uh, just, just chilling, just total relaxation and tranquility. Uh, fantastic. So uh, yeah, um, I may pop back later, um, but if I don't, if this is indeed the end of day two, um, then uh, I shall see you hopefully at uh, day three uh, tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just wait and see, you know. You'll know as soon as I know, but right now I don't know. So <laughs> who knows? But um, yeah, so um, until either later or until tomorrow, um, I shall see you later. and. Um, if you have been watching today, thank you. Uh, it's been um, an early start, but uh, very sort of uh, peaceful and relaxing, just dawdling on up the river and dawdling back down and stopping here and stopping there and just having a wee poke about the place, you know? So, very different adventure to uh, what it was last year. Um, I do have a, I, th I think I'm, I, I, I think I'm actually, um, Deliberately, I'm almost deliberately having um, short, uh, peaceful, quiet um, start to the adventure because um, on Tuesday um, I'm. Pl uh, I know I didn't. I know I said I didn't have any plans, but the one plan I did have is I want to go down into the Southern Broads um, because I do like the Southern Broads. Um, there's, they're, they're very different uh, uh, experience to the, the Northern Broad. Um, so I am planning on going down on Tuesday because um, it's my birthday. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. I know, I know, I didn't say that. I didn't say that before, but yes, it is indeed. I'm, I'm celebrating my birthday on the Broads. So um, I'm planning on going down to the Southern Broads uh, to find a, a, a particularly nice establishment down there to have my little birthday dinner. So um, the latter half of the, the adventure will be the, the longer cruises, the longer days. So I think uh, that's why 
the uh, start of the adventure is uh, the, the, the shorter cruisers. And of course, I'm, I'm still trying to get used to, to mooring by myself, you know. Um, so far, I'm having not... No, I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing okay. I've not had any major disasters or, or major problems. So, yeah, everything's coming along nicely with that. So, uh, yeah, um, looking forward to uh, uh, the, the bigger cruises later on in the, the adventure. But for right now, I'm going to go away and uh, get myself a beer and uh, have a look at the menu. And um, um, I don't think I'll poke about up at St. Uh, I, I have, a, have a wee poke about to the nature reserve or the church because I did that in the last adventure and I showed you all, all that about the, the uh, I don't know if you can see that, the, uh, the church tower uh, and the nature. I did that all last year. So I'll probably not do that again this year. But um, um, yeah, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see how things go then, won't we? Um, but yeah. Uh, I keep saying that, don't I? But yeah, yeah, I know I've, I've still not got over that sort of stuttering thing, but at least I'm looking at the camera lens more often now. <laughs> right, anyway, that's enough babbling for me for the moment. Um, it might be all the rambling for today. Um, so, as soon as uh, something happens, I'll let you know. Uh, but if nothing happens, I'll maybe see you tomorrow. Um, but until then, I'll speak to you later. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.